Technology and the internet have developed to the point where any one of us has the ability to access an unlimited amount of information on an object that can fit in a pocket, from all over the world, even in a remote field in the middle of Florida. Much has been said about the convenience of using smartphones to manage personal life, but I was able to capitalize on the myriad of applications and features available on the iPhone 4 to make it the central tool in my archaeological field studies. In the course of a year-long research project, I visited many archaeological sites all around Florida to take measurements and note the orientations of ancient man-made earthen mounds looking for astronomical alignments. Using apps such as Stellarium, Starwalk, Google Earth, and the built-in compass, I was able to simultaneously see an aerial view of the sites, my present location at the site, the angles of the mounds in relation to the cardinal directions, astronomical data such as sunrise positions on specific dates throughout history, as well as being able to take pictures and record videos of my observations to make a composite and interactive model of the various sites I was mapping. I will now guide you through my archaeological fieldwork and the simple technology I used to discover some truly remarkable history. My primary interest in archaeology is an interdisciplinary subject called archaeoastronomy. Archaeoastronomy is the study of archaeological alignments with respect to celestial phenomena. Famous archaeological sites across the globe, such as Stonehenge, are known to have astronomical significance and alignment. Astronomy was exceptionally important to the ancient civilizations, for agricultural purposes and sacred theological practices. Mesoamerican civilizations, particularly the Maya, are noted for designing their cities and individual structures to align with celestial observances. In North America, sites such as the Bighorn Medicine Wheel, Mesa Verde, and Cahokia all have confirmed archaeoastronomical alignments. The record concerning astronomical practices in pre-Columbian North America suggests that the inhabitants of these lands use less complex methods of expressing their celestial knowledge than the Mesoamerican civilizations did with their procedures. They possessed no system of writing or sophisticated notation to aid in the development of scientific astronomy. This is not surprising, for the more hunter-gatherer cultures of northwest Mexico and the United States never attained the status of state or empire arrived at in the Maya and Aztec civilizations. There was simply less need for precise timekeeping and the statewide regulation of a calendar. The people who originally built mound complexes utilized the astronomical component of their mounds using the following method. The observer would stand at the apex of the mound and look for the appearance of a notable celestial object as it rose over the horizon. Because most of these sites have been damaged over the hundreds of years since the founding civilizations abandoned them, modern archaeoastronomers are unable to replicate these types of horizon event observations. Additionally, Going out to these sites on particular days to make observations, such as on the solstices and equinoxes, is a rather inconvenient method of gathering data. This is where technology steps in. The major site I focused on for my archaeological studies is an earthwork site in Florida, located in Henry County, southwest of Lake Okeechobee in the middle of the largest collection of sugar fields in the country, lies Tony's Mound. Attributed as a ceremonial site of the Belgrade culture, the Tony's Mound Complex is a collection of dirt mounds connected by linear causeways that run through a large circular area. This grainy image is from a camping trip by a non-academic personnel, who had simply heard about the mounds and went out on a swamp buggy for a few days to explore the site and take some aerial photographs from a local friend's biplane. This is the first literary record of Tony's Mound. This image is based off of the 1946 picture with measurements added in. After visiting Tony's Mound in person, I can state that this sketch is wildly inaccurate in terms of the site geometry, which is one of the reasons why I went to the location to take the measurements myself. Before I went driving around to find this remote site, I needed to find out exactly where it was. Thank you, Google Earth. I knew roughly where the site was based on the existing sketches and maps. And after searching the sugarcane fields of central Florida, I found Tony's Mound. Google Earth didn't just allow me to find my site, it also enabled me to view past satellite images going back to 1996. This is one of my favorite features of this software. 
Google Earth has a time scale that allows you to view historic satellite data all over the planet. Using this, I could see how Tony's mound evolved over the past 15 years and try to figure out if any of the structures had any obvious astronomical alignments. Google Earth gives you the height from which you are viewing the location, which is integral for figuring out the size of what you are looking at. It also provides longitudinal and latitudinal positions, which are very important for when you decide to visit the site in person for physical evidence to accompany the satellite images. After using the iPhone's standard maps application, with data also powered by Google, to navigate my way to the mound, I found that what looked clearly defined from an aerial view looked very, very different from ground level. Thankfully, I was able to switch between the static aerial view from Google Earth to the Maps application, which showed me exactly where I was in relation to the overall plan of the site, demonstrated here at the Fort Center site just northwest of Tony's Mound. Armed with my Google Maps printout from 1996, a couple of tripods, a tape measure, a laser pointer, and a leveler, I set about setting up the alignments. Due to very foggy conditions, I had to rely on the information I was getting from my phone as to the orientations of the mounds and causeways. Once the equipment was set up, I switched over to the Compass app, another preset standard iPhone application. By leveling the compass and confirming the sight line with the laser pointer, I obtained the degree orientation for each of the mounds and their corresponding causeways. From this data, I was able to create a new sketch of Tony's Mound that modified the existing sketch from 1980. By superimposing the sight lines onto my sketch, I created a new map to accompany a table with the corresponding degree measurements from the orientations of the mounds. Equipped with this information, it was time to switch from archaeology and laying down in the dirt to astronomy and software simulation. With my background in astrophysics, I knew of two apps which would be perfect for the job. Stellarium and Starwalk. Starwalk is a paid app available from iTunes and powered by data from the European Space Agency. This is an excellent resource for everything from walking along the beach at night trying to find a constellation or a planet, to tracking satellites, or finding out what the sky looked like at a particular date in history. After opening up the application on your phone, raise the phone up to the sky and match the view on the screen with an easily identifiable object in the sky, such as the moon or the sun, depending on the time of day. This image is a screenshot from Starwalk taken on the vernal equinox on Tony's Mound in 2011, at the exact time the sun rose above the horizon. By changing the time in the upper right hand corner, we can simulate the position of the sun as it sets at the horizon, rather than having to wait 12 hours to see it in person. Starwalk also lets you simulate the date in addition to the time of day. However, this feature only goes back to the year 1600, as seen here. In order to go further back in time, we turn to Stellarium, a free application also available from iTunes. Stellarium is a software that I first found for use on a desktop and had used previously for tracking stars for an observational astronomy course. Using Stellarium, I have set my location to the coordinates of Tony's Mound and set the date to the spring equinox of the year 801 CE roughly the time when the Belglade people might have been performing their ceremonial rituals at this complex. The sun is just visible over the horizon, and I can measure the azimuthal angle and track the sun as it transits the sky before setting in the west. The process for Venus was similar, except for the dates. I arbitrarily started in the year 800 CE, and then looked for Venus as it rose above the horizon, both as a morning star and an evening star. Venus was an important celestial object for the ancient civilizations, and is unique in having five distinct paths of motion across the sky throughout the year. This is because of the orbit of Venus in respect to the orbit of the Earth, a scientific concept foreign to our ancestors, who were nevertheless captivated by this mysterious heavenly object. While solar alignments in architecture correspond with specific annual dates, such as the equinoxes and solstices, planetary alignments particularly those involving Venus, do not require fixed dates in order to be classified as having an alignment. In fact, it is only the azimuthal location of the appearance of the planet that matters in this respect. Switching back to Starwalk, we can find Venus, select it, and click on the information icon in the top left. This will open up a screen with astronomical data, such as the right ascension and declination, 
altitude, and azimuth, as well as orbital characteristics and physical data. Using this information and that found using Stellarium, I was able to compile data for tracking Venus as it would have appeared at Tony's Mound 1200 years ago. Here are a few of the charts I made that correspond to Venus positions throughout the year matched up with one of the five paths. The alignments of the mounds and causeways are in this chart, as are the rising and setting azimuthal angles of the Sun during the solstices and equinoxes. The azimuthal angle is the object's location on the horizon, like the degrees on a compass. Note, the spring equinox rising azimuthal angle of 96 degrees and its correspondence with the orientation found of Mound 3. It is plausible that this solar alignment is just one of many astronomical orientations at Tony's Mound, though I have only looked at a few thus far. Ancient civilizations gave special significance to celestial objects, and unless we find artifacts with iconographical information or glyphic inscriptions, it is impossible to figure out which of the thousands of visible objects meant something to the people of long ago. The research that I have undertaken has many similarities to the archaeoastronomical studies of the later 20th century. However, the technologies that exist today have proved very useful for determining information and data that was not possible in these early analyses. The availability of satellite images has aided my research immensely, particularly those from Google Maps and Google Earth. Astronomical applications such as Starwalk and Stellarium allowed me to program the coordinates of the archaeological sites I focused on, particularly Tony's Mound, and observe not only the solstices and equinoxes, but also to track the location of Venus at my locations. And of course, though a simple handheld compass would have worked just as well, the purpose of a smartphone makes it so that we don't need to carry multiple devices around with us wherever we go. It gives us the ability to check our email and Twitter, browse the web, remind us of meetings, give us directions, play music, take pictures, and call home, all in the palm of our hand. With this single device, I was able to go out into the field literally and simultaneously see an aerial view of the site, my present location, a compass, astronomical data, and record pictures and video of my observations, all while standing in the middle of a remote sugarcane field in central Florida. And that is why my iPhone is the most useful tool for combining archaeology and astronomy, using the greatest technology of the day to discover some truly remarkable things about our past.